So, um, carrying on from part two of this video uh, of creating the Red Bull can, uh, we just laid out all of our um, UVs for the actual cylindrical object, which is our can. So then we need to kind of go into Tools, Render UVW Template, so that, and you click it again, uh, and that's that, that's going to create this render uh, like this of of an image. You know, the reason for this one that I have not gone for 512 by 512 like I did on the computer tower is because there's going to be a lot of text on the side of this can. So for this, you know, you could do 512, but it may be a little blurry, the um, texture. I, I want it to be really crisp. Um, so poss possibly, and actually most likely in game, it would be a smaller uh, texture size. But just for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to do it 1024 by 1024 um, just so you can clear it see it a little better a little clearly uh, or a little clearer um, and I think it would be really beneficial so I'm just going to leave it as 1024 and hit render UV template so you can see it's quite large there uh, but again I'm not going to worry about it just now um, I'm just going to hit the save icon you know I've already got it set to the red bull can folder and it's really good to kind of you know, organize your file folders. So if you're doing a 3D model on this Red Bull can, then create a folder called Red Bull can. And then in that folder, you can have your 3ds Max file and also your texture files, any reference images you found, you know, everything needs to be placed in the same folder. So I'm just going to call this Red Bull can texture. So be really clear with your uh, file names because it will be easier for you to figure out what's what you know you don't just want to call everything uh, like Red Bull or just texture you want to be a bit more precise than that so with JPEG selected uh, I'm just gonna hit save and when you save you know make sure your, your quality is set to best so 100 and then just hit OK so I'm gonna go into Photoshop I'm gonna open go into my Red Bull can folder and open the Red Bull can texture so this is the texture sheet and this is where I need to apply my textures and just like I did for the um, PC tower I've already found some really useful textures <coughs> so you know I could go out there and find create one you know but I found one online, although it's not English, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, it's just, you know, quite a decent texture, which I think is fairly accurate. You know, I can't be 100% sure because it's not English and I don't read this, el this language. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure someone out there can tell me if it is correct. So I'm just going to copy this. And in here, I'm just going to paste and it is a very very large file so I'm going to zoom out a hell of a lot press ctrl T and in fact do you know what I'm going to make sure there we are there we are I was just making sure that I was free transforming it so I'm just going to scale this down so that it fits the texture space that I've allocated for my Red Bull can Again, I'm not going to worry too much if I stretch it a little bit because in the end it's going to kind of wrap around anyway. So just going to make sure it kind of just overlaps the green line. Yeah, don't go too far, but so it just overlaps it. Same on this side. And then press enter. So that, that's that part of my texture done. I've, I've also got an image of the top of the can, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in you know where I use normally a box selection tool if you hold it down you can have an elliptical marquee tool which is kind of just a way of saying an oval selection tool so you can select in kind of circular shapes so I'm going to hold alt and that allows me to kind of select from the middle out like this otherwise if I normally just drag it's going to kind of pull out to one side but if I hold alt it's going to kind of go out in all in all sides and also if I hold shift it will make sure that it goes in a perfect circle so I'm just going to kind of go to this sort of value just here 
I'm going to move it in place so it's a little better positioned. I think that's okay. Then, you know, I, if I press delete now, it's going to delete the middle, and I don't want that. I actually want to delete the areas around it. So I'm going to go to select, then I'm going to inverse the selection so it inverts the selection. So now I've got everything selected on the outside. And if I press delete now, you can see that I'm only left with, you know, the top of the can, which is exactly what I want. So then I can kind of move that area, move that up into the area where the top of the can will be. <coughs> and I can just scale that up so it fits just over the green lines again. And press enter. There we are. Uh, I did manage to find an image of the bottom of a can too, so I'm just going to copy this. The, it, I mean it is water watermark from shutterstock.com uh, but I can actually kind of crop that image uh, this this one just here and I can use that as a rough kind of guide I guess for the bottom of the can so I think that should be okay if I just uh, again just go to select inverse delete so I've got the bottom of the can there and then I can just drag it up control T so I can go on free transform by holding shift again because I, I don't want to kind of scale it like that I want to hold shift so it makes sure it stays a circle and then just put it in position making sure that it just covers our green outline like that and you know I did say for this sort of area here I'm going to give it a generic kind of silver color so I'm just gonna select actually the color which is on the um, texture for the side of the um, can and then I'm just gonna paint it in so I'm gonna hold shift when I paint so it makes sure it you know, goes in a straight line and I'm gonna do it again so it covers it just clean it up a little bit and there we have it there's my text texture sheet for my red bull can so I'm gonna save it again just as a JPEG because I don't think I'd need to change it again um, so just make sure you overwrite you know you can save it as a PSD if you if you want um, if you want to maintain the layers that means that you can kind of go in there and edit some stuff late later and you know do whatever you want but I'm not gonna bother with that <coughs> so now I can just close this deselect that and you know I'm gonna kinda go through this a little quicker but that, but it's the same as the PC tower you go to your material editor so it's under rend rendering material editor compact material editor or you could just press M go on a new black material go down to maps and in maps you wanna hit diffuse color so hit non next to diffuse color and that's gonna allow you to bring in an image by double clicking bitmap go to your red bull can folder and you want to open up that texture that we've just created then you go to parent so you hit that icon just there make sure your object is selected at this stage else your texture will not apply to anything then you apply it with this icon here which is to assign material to selection and then you make it vis visible with this icon just here which is to show the standard map in viewport I can close that then you know, don't worry if it looks a little blurry in, in your viewport you know we don't need to worry about that because when I rend render it it will be a lot crisper but this kind of gives me a brief highlight of what it will look like I can press F4 and F4 will basically um, get rid of the edges for me and I'll be able to see it so that's looking quite good the bottom of the can the top of the can so what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna again put a plane at the bottom of this like so I'm just gonna apply 
a really basic grey texture to it, a grey material. And then I'm just going to move my can into the middle. If you remember from last time, I went into lighting, which is just here, so light. I go to standard lighting, so from phot photometric, then I click on to skylight. And again, a skylight can go anywhere. And then under rendering, I go to render sets, uh, setup, and then click on to render oh in fact this is a good point to make actually currently my scene is set is set up with the mental ray renderer so I can change that now so under common if you scroll all the way down go to assign renderer and if you want to change it you know currently we just want it on default scan line so I can just go to the three dots on the right of production change it to default scanline you know that will be the one that yours will be set on unless you've changed it so don't worry about this this step because you know this step is only there because I changed my renderer but for you guys just starting a new file uh, by default it will just be on a normal um, default scanline renderer anyway so in your render setup you click on to advanced lighting then in this drop down you click on to light tracer and if I was to just quickly kind of render that out you can basically see what that looks like if you find you know this gray this gray sort of ground is overlapping or it's making it hard to see the color or it's kind of merging a little bit too much I can just change that to a really kind of dark tone, I guess. A dark tone, or you could change change it to a color if you wish as well. But I'm just going to change it to a darker tone. So it'll just make the the can sort of stand out a bit more. But again, we got a bit of ambient occlusion there. You can see a bit of shade shading and stuff. Um, one thing that I am going to sort of add as an additional. Thing, I guess uh, you can see how there's shadows just here so I'm going to show you how to really quickly put in a light which is going to allow you to put in some shadows so if I zoom out click onto Omni which is kind of like a light bulb um, light so it's going to kind of shine in every direction so if I click anywhere I want to place it so just down here first and then with the move tool if I just drag this up like so and then in the modify tab under the shadows heading make sure shadows are selected as on and then in the drop down click onto ray traced shadows and now if I was to ren ren render this you'll be able to see as soon as you can see the ground anyway that we have a shadow in there if you find that the brightness is too high you can change them for both of them so you can kind of just select the skylight reduce the multiplier so not you know from 1 to like 0 0.6 possibly uh, and the same for the sky uh, for, for the Omni you can change the intensity so, so the multiplier would go from 1 to like 0 0.8 if I was to render that out again whoops that's zoomed in a bit too much if I was to render that out again you'd get a much better color so I hope you've uh, enjoyed this tutorial it is a three-part long series but you know I did try and cover as much as possible and explain things as best as I could um, I will continue this series on unwrapping objects uh, but it is quite late now so I think I'm gonna call it a night and Again, just leave any feedback uh, if you like things, you know, positive things and actually bad things too. So if there's anything you want changing, then let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoy uh, these tutorials and let me know how you get on.